letter sounds like, and then I'm going to pull up some of the trickier letters in another slide and go through those as well as our vowels. Um, over to the left, you'll see I've written each letter out um, in its capital and lowercase forms. And to the right is how the letter is spelled, how it sounds. So the first letter we have is A, and it sounds like the short A ah in father in English. So we have A. Ah. Um, Proximo tenemos B. The E makes the B sound. Then we have C, D, A, F, H, H, I, J, J, L, M, N, N, O, P, Q, R. Over here we have S, T, U, B, double U, B, X, Y, and Z. Okay, for V, W, and Y, there's actually more than one way you could say those letters. I think I said B here. Um, some places call it U, B. It might even be called B baja or B corta. The W can be doble V, V doble, B doble, doble B, or doble U. Um, and it all depends on what country you're in as to how they pronounce the following letters. And then your Y, you might hear it referred to as Y or as Y. Um, and again, you'll just want to refer to the letter by the name that the country that you're in tends to use. Um, so let's go ahead and look at how some of the trickier ones sound. Okay. Um, the vowels uh, are not as difficult as they are in English in the sense that um, our vowels in English have multiple sounds, which make them it makes it difficult for someone learning English to know um, how to pronounce that vowel when they see that see it in a word. They have a lot of rules to learn as to um, whether it makes a long or a short sound. Um, whereas in Spanish, each vowel only has one sound. The negative is, though, is that it's not always the sound that we in English would associate with that particular vowel, which makes it tricky. So the A is A, as in the A in father. So whenever you see this letter, you pronounce it A. V and B actually sound the same. So whenever you see a B or a V, you pronounce it B. Um, and sometimes that's why you might see the B called B grande or the B called B corta because grande means big B and B corta means little B. Um, so you may find people who will call them B grande, B corta because they have the same sound. So whenever you see a word, for example, you have bal sexto, oops, and then maybe we have boy. You pronounce both of those the same. Baloncesto, boy. Um, the C followed by an E or an I sounds like an S, and C followed by an A, O, U, or a consonant is going to sound like a K. So the C has two sounds, and you have to look at what letters follow it to know how to pronounce it. So for example, you have this word, cinco. Um, the C... The first C is followed by an I, so it's going to make an S sound, whereas the second C is followed by an O, so it's going to make the, C, the K sound. So how you would pronounce these, um, this word would be seen co and you would do that, the first one, the first C sounds like an S because it's next to an I, and the second C sounds like a K because it's next to an O, so you would say cinco. Um, the E sounds like the E and de, so it makes an A sound, so this is A and this is A. G also has um, more than one sound, it kind of works like the C does, that G next to an E, or an I sounds like an H, and next to an A, O, U, or a consonant sounds like our hard G. 
So if you have the word geografia, okay, you will see that this G sounds like an H and this G sounds more like what we would associate with a typical G sound, a G sound. And it looks like this. You would, um, it would sound like this. And it sounds like that because this G is next to an E, so it sounds like an H, whereas this G is next to an R, so it sounds like a G. Geografia. Um, the J also sounds like an H, so this word, probably seen this name before, you don't pronounce it as Jose, you actually say Jose, because J sounds like an H. So we would pronounce it like this. Okay. The N -Y makes a nasal sound. It's not, uh, we don't have this letter in English. It basically is that one letter makes the sound of the N and Y written together. So a word in Spanish would be año, and you might pronounce it as because of that N with a tilde over it, you might pronounce this word like this, on, yo, okay, so you hear that N, Y, on, yo, that's, that's how you make the, that's how you pronounce the N with the tilde over at the N, Y, um, the double L is no longer a letter in Spanish, but it's still a phonetic sound, so whenever you see two L's together, you pronounce it like Y, um, many of you have probably seen this phrase before, um, I call myself, you've got the double L right here, so we're not going to say, we don't pronounce that as me llamo, we pronounce that word as me llamo, which looks like this, me llamo, okay, the Q is often accompanied by a U, they go together, and when they go together, when they're a Q U, they sound like a K. That's how you get the K K sound because C next to an E or an I switches to an S, so it can't make the K K sound. So you use a Q U. So, um, for example, if we have this right here, chemistry, you don't pronounce it with. Quimica, we say quimica, like this. That Q U sounds like a K. So, he, me, ka. Okay? And you might have this word, you'll see a lot, it's a question word, meaning what? But you don't pronounce it as que, you pronounce it as K. Um, the double R, or um, a word that starts with the R, well, the double R is no longer a phonetic, I mean, it still is a phonetic sound, it's no longer a letter of the Spanish alphabet, um, but when you see the double R, that's when you would roll your tongue if you can, and you also roll it if a word starts with the letter R. So, for example, if I have, I have carro. And I can't really write it out, but um, I would roll this R. So if you have these two words, which I had written over there, the first word means car or cart. The second word means expensive. This one would be pronounced carro whereas this one is caro. So that's how they make the distinction between the two words, carro, caro. So if, if you can roll your tongue when you see the double R, that's when you would do it. The X sounds like an X, but when followed by, by an E or an I, it often sounds like an H, such as um, in the word Mexico, 
me say Mexico, but in Spanish you would say me -ki -ko. Mexico. Um, the U, oh no, I'm sorry, the Z sounds like an S, so when you see this word, you don't say zapato, you say Sapato. So when you see the Z, you make the you make this sound. Um, unless you are in southern Spain, there's a dialect there where they'll, they'll use the Theo, and they use it both for the Z and for the C next to E's and I's. So if you were in southern Spain, instead of making this, pronouncing this as Cinco, you'd call it Cinco. And instead of pronouncing this as Zapato, you'd pronounce it Zapato. But that's just one part of Spain in which they use the Theo everywhere else. The C, E, C, I, and the Z are going to sound like an S. And that's, it's up to you how you want to pronounce it. Um, and it also depends on where you end up traveling or studying as to how your personal dialect is going to sound. If you um, end up studying in Spain, in southern Spain, you're probably going to use the Theo. If you end up studying in Latin America, um, probably not. Um, the letter U makes the W sound, as in the words puerta, muerto, and hueve. So when you hear the W, you're often going to write a U. So here is puerta, door. You would pronounce that as puerta, puerta, from the B. Puerta. Um, and when a letter carries, so if you're spelling out uh, where letters, if you're spelling something out in Spanish um, and your letter carries an accent mark, you just say con acento after the letter that needs an accent mark. So if you were spelling out Maria, you would say M A R I con acento. That's how somebody knows to put an accent mark over the I. Ah. Um, and then the letter Y, the last one, it can be a semi vowel, as in the English words boy and toy, like Paraguay boy, but it can also be a, con a consonant as in the English word yard and yesterday, yo, maya. So sometimes your Y is going to sound like a semi-vowel, it's soft, Paraguay, boy, and sometimes it's going to be a little harsher, yo, maya. And hopefully that helps you understand how to pronounce your letters in Spanish.